<laughs> How many hands do you have? Oh, man, let me tell you. Right about now, I, I figured out how to master holding three coffee mugs. You're OD on caffeine. caffeine. Oh, man, I got espresso shots, a uh, cup of coffee because I needed an extra one, and then uh, coffee from home. So, yeah. I... Wide awake, wow. man. <laughs> Somebody's not sleeping tonight. <laughs> not at all, or hasn't slept at night. <laughs> I'm running on two hours of sleep, but we're here, everybody. <laughs> you can like hear the future now. <laughs> Man, I tell you, I'm tasting colors. <laughs> that's, that's how bad it is. I'm like, that's what mm, is that would orange taste like? Tastes like cinnamon. <laughs> this whole time I thought it tasted like an orange. Nope. No, just it was wrong. So I'm Tasting air. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Zia Comic Weekly. Uh, bringing it to you guys an episode a uh, day early because we got so much going on, man. And, Troy, how did your busy schedule end up becoming our busy schedule? <laughs> it, it was osmosis. Oh, Science. man, I tell you, at this point, I think I almost showed up at Zia Comics. I was like, wait, I don't work here. I work at the station. What's going on here? We're it's some Kafka type stuff. We're merging intertwined at this point. We if are I start showing up at the studio at 5 a.m. Then, you know, it's working. <laughs> I know, right. You're just going to be in here doing traffic. Uh, just, by the way, make sure you guys stay off of I-25 and I-10 today because that street's so closed. So, yeah, <laughs> this is Troy. This hour being brought to you by Zia Comics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Troy, what's what's happening, my man? Uh, how are things going? Uh, not bad. Getting ready to. I'm, I'm glad we could do it today because uh, I'm going to be traveling tomorrow Ooh. to the. Uh, is California the Sunshine State or is that Florida? Mm, I think yeah. that's. Yeah, they both got sun. Yeah, I'm going. To, I'm going to San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, let's, oh, it's is it already Comic Con season? Yes. Okay. It starts tomorrow. Oh, four days. Okay. Tonight, okay. yeah, it's a nice preview night, but. I can only stay away so long. I got so much stuff going on. So just going for the weekend. Nice. Nice. So, uh, but, you know, Comic-Con coming up. Uh, what are you looking forward to, man? Uh, it's it's going to be kind of weird this year because of the, the SAG and writer strike. Uh, anybody, yeah. any of the actors who are uh, on SAG cannot do anything that promotes uh, any any kind of film works. That's all San Diego is, is nothing but a huge commercial for upcoming stuff. <laughs> now, it won't affect small cons like ours uh, because we're not, we're independent. We're not affiliated with movie studios and anything like that. So Las Cruces Comic Con still good. <laughs> Everybody's coming. Uh, it's yeah. just like San Diego is going to be hurting. Let me ask you, man, like, is it like, I don't know if you're learning new things about this whole thing as it's going along. Cause I feels like every week I'm finding something new about, it, especially when it comes to the writers and now the actors, like, um, I think it was the, the kid from Cobra Kai, who's also going to be in blue beetle. Uh, he actually mentioned that he will be pausing promotions for it because it's part of, you know, him being a part of the SAG, he cannot mm -hmm. do that. So, yeah. So all this promotion that they were doing, it just stopped because they're on strike yeah and like i said if you've ever seen anything about san diego it's heavy heavy into movie and tv promotion stuff and every one of those things i think uh, i think i even read hall h which usually holds six thousand people and there's like a waiting line thousands of people deep to get in i, I think they said hall h is going to be closed on sunday because they just don't have programming oh, to wow. fill it okay <laughs> man yeah, everybody wants to see the new Marvel trailers. All you know, everybody wants to see the new hotness, and there ain't gonna be no hotness. <laughs> yeah, you know what? And it's kind of tough, man, because this is around the time where we really get to just break down. I mean, over the years, man, we've gotten a chance to break down from you know, like last year, you got a chance to see like the what was gonna be the next phases of Marvel. I mean, yeah. we got to see all that, and it just becomes this conversation that unravels throughout the months, and as we get to the movie that now it's going to be a little interesting to see what happens moving forward, especially for the rest of the year, because, you know, we know some movies are set to come out, but what's going to happen with the promotion side of it? Yeah, that's the thing, because without promotion, a lot of people, uh, you know, they live under a rock or something, and they don't know about this stuff that's coming up unless you yeah. put it right in front of their face. Well, I'll be honest, uh, Mission Impossible kind of crept up on me, did not know, I, I mean, until we jumped on last Thursday that I'm like, 
right before we, I was like, wait, it's already coming out on Friday. And then finding out that it got leaked. I was like, I didn't even realize. So yeah, man, promotion is everything. I mean, they've been doing a good job promoting the Barbie movie, but not a great job promoting mission impossible. Yeah. I've, I've heard very little about mission impossible. So I heard it was a good movie, but on, I, yeah. I think I think they jumped the shark on that one with me. I'm I'm done with Mission yeah, Impossible. No. no, I mean I think this one and then one more, and then Tom Cruise is set and sell from the Mission Impossible storyline. So <laughs> we'll we'll see what happens. But okay, so Comic Con is coming up this weekend. Uh, you know, there's going to be I mean stuff, and like you said, just San Diego is just going to be filled with it. But it's going to have a different feel this year. I tell you, man, that's like a bucket list for me. Like I know a lot of people say, oh, I want to go to the Super Bowl. Comic-Con in San Diego is one that I would want to go to, like, when it has everything focused on it. Because that just seems like a great weekend and just a lot of nerdom happening in San Diego. We we can make that happen. Yeah, I, I, I can get tickets. But I would suggest you try uh, some of the smaller con, Like, Cruces and El Paso are actually small cons. Uh, go to Phoenix. That's probably the next step up. And then if you hit San Diego, it's sensory overload, man. You'll get an aneurysm trying to see yeah, everything. You also got Albuquerque that's down the street, too. That's, uh, yeah, uh, they, they, they get a pretty decent uh, turnout. Yeah, they do um, pretty good. But, yeah, I, I would suggest hitting a couple of those up before you go to San Diego because there's just – before you even get to the convention center, like a mile away, that you start seeing Comic-Con stuff. Uh, these companies rent out the buildings on the way up to, you know, all through the Gaslight District and theme them sci-fi has a restaurant they theme for their upcoming shows every year it's just it's you can't believe the madness of that city during the comic-con week i tell you i was there i was in san diego one time uh after comic-con had hit we were the there cleanup. for a convention oh man it was like you get there you're like what happened here just because all down uh seaport uh seaport village you're just like, what was going on here that we missed? And then, you know, we weren't we weren't that far from the convention center where we were staying. And we're like, oh, Comic-Con was happening. And Matt, it's like, they were like, okay, we're going to need. It's like going on spring break and then realize I'm going to need a week off after partying this yeah. hard. Because it's like, it's a lot, man. But it's like the fact that San Diego's like, hey, we need a break uh, after all this stuff that just happened with Comic-Con. So it just, every man. possible space around there is filled with Comic-Con. So they even wrapped the trolley with uh, comic-con yeah. stuff it's crazy I, man they i mean talk about how much, how much money is san diego pulling in for something like this man. i think they said that's like 40 to 50 percent of their annual income that week yeah <laughs> and there's i mean and then they have the ballpark that is just right across the way which i um, wouldn't be shocked if in future cons they start getting that involved as well oh, they, just, they do they, they do. do and the parking lot next to it they used to i don't know what they had in lately um yeah, I do too. It was the impact and practical jokers used to have stuff in there. Before that, it was the Walking Dead zombie escape, oh my which was kind of cool over all the different levels in Petco Park. So yeah, they incorporated. I'm telling you, everything about a mile out is nothing but Comic Con. Oh, man, that's it's, it's that's a dream right there. So like you said, but I I got to build myself up to it first. So I, I don't. <laughs> think I'm, and just the way that I've been taking, I, I'm gonna have to drink all this coffee and more if I'm gonna stay up stay up with everybody. Yeah, because they have stuff going on all hours of the night. The the commission closes, the outside's still going. Gaslight's still going. It's it's crazy. Man, I will we'll, we'll <laughs> see. Troy will be back, everybody. He has to come back. He, he can't just stay up there. And, although it is an awesome place. Yeah, it's just perfect yeah. weather. Oh, we've looked. I can't afford a, a place there though. <laughs> right? You're like, oh, I love that. Oh, okay. So, maybe we can get some, oh no. Well, maybe something a little farther out. No. No. <laughs> Gas is how much? No. Yeah, maybe in Oregon. Maybe we can no. buy in Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But uh let's uh let's talk Las Cruces Comic Con. Uh I gotta say, shout out to Troy, man. You have hooked us up with uh, you know, we got uh, over the next couple of weeks, guys. On all our Adams radio stations, you're going to be hearing from different guests that are going to be appearing at Comic Con. Uh, you know, we just it's it's awesome just gearing up for Comic Con uh, here in Las Cruces. Uh, man, you're keeping us busy, man, just with the with the lineup <laughs> that you have going on. Uh, what's it been like for Las Cruces Comic Con on our end, as far as just kind of getting everything ready? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's been yeah, it's been a lot. Uh, in fact, we just added three more guests 
Um, okay. Have an officially announced them. They're up on the website, but got three more. We got, uh, I'll go ahead and tell you, we got uh, Martin Kleba uh, from Pirates of the Caribbean, the, the little dude. He's going to be there. Robert Mukes from House of a Thousand Corpses. Uh, I think he played Rufus Firefly. He's going to be there. And um, Keith Coogan from uh, Adventures in Babysitting. And he also did the, the coolest thing is he did the voice of Todd the Fox in Fox and the Hound. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, like, it, I know we say this and it's, it's, it says, it's been said a lot, but man, is people from our generation that are just like, you almost become a kid again when you get to go watch these things. Because I tell you, Matt, I don't know how many times I heard about, have you seen Atreyu, how he looks now? Like, you know, I mean, everyone around here is talking about like, oh, Atreyu. I mean, he's he's into bodybuilding now. I'm like, I don't know. I just remember him from yeah. from the movie back then. Yeah, he does some martial arts and I, he's in he's in pretty decent shape. I know. Uh, I still man. wouldn't want to fight him. So absolutely not. Whether it was from the movie or now, like <laughs> yeah, uh, even as a little kid, I wouldn't fight. Him. <laughs> it's like no, I'm a, I'm gonna pass on that one. But uh, no, Trey, leave me alone. <laughs> uh tickets they can still get tickets right uh, i know you guys have been posting stuff on social medias especially uh for you know vip and just some of the perks for vip uh man I, I tell you it doesn't get no better than that than the stuff that they get if they get their their vip tickets yeah i mean i we and like i said recently we threw in that free photo op with uh yeah. i guess your choice that right there is anywhere from you know 40 to 50 bucks uh, if you had to pay for it, plus all the other stuff, you know, the T-shirt, the the swag bag, the pins, the all that other stuff, the water town, it all, it's it's worth it. I, in my mind, it's really worth it, especially when you see some of these other events. You go and pay through the nose, and they don't give you anything. <laughs> yeah, and then seat. you have, and then you have uh, the company that's going to be there to authenticate it. So if you do get something, yeah, signed, JSA, JSA is there. So yeah, you can. Uh, you take care of them. I almost gave my initials, by the way. I'm all JMH is going to be there. I was like, wait, no, that's me. Well, what am I doing? Yeah, you will be, but you're I mean, not I'll be there. But I don't know what I could do. I could say, like, yeah, I watched you. Like, yeah, that, I that's real. You. Yeah, I think that's real. I think, I, hold on, man. Let me go stand right there as he signs it. Yep, it's real. I can prove it. Just tell them to call me if they don't believe you. <laughs> uh, yeah, guys, get your uh, get your tickets now. Las Cruces Comic Con.com. What about vendor spots? Sold out. All I right. told everybody, I mean, it, like and I've had, I've had people call me going, oh, I don't see any spots available. Yeah, because they're sold out. <laughs> I told you this was going to happen. Yeah, he's been saying this since June. Mm -hmm. Like, you've been saying this for a while. Even when you had your other events going on, you were telling like, hey, don't miss out. And yeah, yeah, you missed out. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the same thing. VIP, will, the, those tickets will probably sell out here soon, too. They're, they're starting to pick up um, with the more ad, the ads are starting to hit, you know. <clears throat> billboards radio all that all those ads are starting to hit and we got banners hanging around town so yeah don't don't sleep on it <laughs> uh especially for the people that are going to be coming back to nmsu in the fall you know uh you know just got school that's going to be underway here in a couple of weeks uh you got that i know here i am about to give some bad financial advice uh <laughs> just like hey you take out you got some got some of that loan money or you got some of that grab money get you it's not even you know what you know what it is it's it's a good price, especially for the VIP, man. Like, you can't beat that for all the stuff that they are getting. Like, y'all don't realize, like, that is a really good ticket. Because like you said, they're paying that much just for one thing. You're getting the VIP treatment for the price. Yeah. That you're yeah. Frontline access, you know, preferred seating, all, all that stuff. Uh, and and we're doing a VIP ticket giveaway, too. You can go and enter to win that. Um, so those guys will get a pair of VIP tickets plus a $50 voucher at concessions. Yeah. So you can go front of the line with your VIP. It's been your $50 voucher. And it's worth it, by the way, guys. I'm just going to tell you that right now, because <laughs> when you get there, you're like, oh, yeah, I just you can skip all that line and just get right in. Uh, and then uh, I'm excited, too, because the, the wrestling side of, uh, of Comic-Con is going to be fun. So, you know, me and Gina will be there uh, for Honky Tonk Man. And, you guys should uh, dress up as Rhythm and Blues because Craig the Hammer Valentine is going to be there, too. Uh, you know what, though? I think Gina would have to be the rhythm side of it. <laughs> Gino, I just found this. I know I'm over here. I'm getting ready to just spoil all the secrets. You know, Gino took dancing classes in college. No. 
Gino actually is a professional dancer, not you like the, not that type of professional dancer. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Gino can foxtrot and all that. Like Gino should probably be on Dancing with the Stars. Apparently, wow, would have never thought it. Right, I'd have been like, wow. But I actually got confirmation. His professor at MSU actually confirmed it for us. Yeah, we we did a whole investigation on this. We thought Gino was just lying, but no, Gino was actually true. So Gino can be, cut a rug. He he can. <laughs> Gino he, he was at Hurricane Alley back in the day. <laughs> uh, man, we love Gino, man. Sorry, Gino. I didn't even embarrass you like that, man. It's it's all good. He'll he's, he's oh, I'm not not embarrassing. I'm I'm actually kind of impressed because I know that's why I was like I, I was the white guy I had... dance where you plant your feet and all you do is just kind of do this. See, and I always thought I had rhythm, but apparently Gino can foxtrot, tango, and paso doble. And I learned all this, by the way, from him. I didn't know these terms. So thank you, Gino, for teaching me all these things. So change his name to Mo Ritmo. <laughs> <laughs> He's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Ole. Hey. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. All right. Uh, let's nerd out because there's quite a bit to go over, especially with uh, the. Uh, uh, the issues that are going on with Disney. Now, uh, you've probably seen some comments from uh, the main man from Disney uh, saying about they're going to really cut back on a lot of Marvel, a lot of Star Wars, and just a lot of the stuff that we've been seeing, you know, oversaturated as of lately. Not that it's a bad thing, uh, but apparently in the next couple of years, they plan to really slow down on the Marvel and Star Wars. Uh, memorabilia and series and everything else that's coming along. So uh, what are your thoughts about that as far as them getting ready to kind of pump the brakes on a lot of our favorite uh, favorite brands? Uh, I mean, they're taking a, a page out of the crack dealer's book. They give you enough that you get hooked, and then they pull back, oh, you want more? You want more? Yeah. Now you got to get Disney Plus Plus. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that, man, because they're going to be like, oh, do you want to see it? You got to add a plus to it. And yeah, that plus. Disney Plus Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> ultra supreme like wait am i pumping gas or am i streaming a movie what's it's, going on here that's that's the next step you know everybody's streaming now so they're going to have a, a you get the regular streaming and then you're going to get the plus streaming they already I, have a uh, commercial no commercial yeah i mean at this point i mean that model is cool with me i mean i i'm honestly i mean i have uh peacock i have it with the ads i'm okay with it like eh, i think if, what's what's a few ads? i grew up with ads so it doesn't bother me as much yeah <laughs> So I'm not, I'm not in no rush. If I'm watching TV, I'm going to take my time. And if I got to watch a 30 second ad, we'll watch a 30 second ad. We'll be okay. <laughs> well, I like it now. A lot of times they'll put up in the little corner, how long the commercials are lasting. So I was like, okay, I got a minute and a half to go to the bathroom. <laughs> now you kids are lucky. We were having to guess at it. We're like, okay, the commercial start. This might be the long one. Let's do this quick. Go to the restroom, go get snacks, but remember to wash your hands first before you get the snacks after you use the restroom. So and then you got the people always mess with you, like, oh, it's back, it's back, it's back. So you run in there and oh, just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, Dude, got I peed all over myself. <laughs> I gotta go clean it up now. Uh I, I think it's so I mean I, I, as much as I like how much we're content we're getting. I think them dialing it back a little. I think it's also going to allow for them to go back and promote some of the other TV series that may have not have gotten watched. Um, I know the what is it the the Marvel the Miss Marvel is that the one with the kid that was on Disney? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That I believe is getting ready to move to ABC because of the strike and them needing content. They're getting ready to move that to ABC to try to get more viewers on that. So is this a formula where they're like, hey, you know, even though this was streaming and it's been out for a couple of years. Like, are we going to see some of these TV shows make their way to basic cable and use that as a way, as a, in a sense, a ploy to say, hey, oh, I like this. And by the time they get to the new season, then you go back and you get Disney Plus, Supreme, mm -hmm. Ultra. That's how they used to do it with movies. You know, you wait a year and then all of a sudden the movie would hit on CBS, ABC yeah. with commercials. Yeah, I mean, but hey, we're, we're already paying for the commercials as it is. So uh, I, I I don't know, man. I'm 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 cool with it, but also they just you're you got so much that you know we have to get to, and you know now with the writer strike, a lot of the movies that we're looking forward to are getting pushed back. So you know, Avengers, the upcoming Avengers movie, you're looking at another year added to what we were already going to have to wait for. Yeah, and I'm I'm wondering how that's going to because right now with all of them being on strike and nothing to do, 
they can still do these small cons. So we're starting to see, you know, they're hitting us up and say, Hey man, uh, you need another person for your con. Hey, so is the opposite going to happen when the strike's over? Cause everybody's going to run back to production and it's just going to suck all the talent out of the con scene. I'm wondering, man, cause that, that thing, we don't think a lot of people think about it too, because everyone's rushing to get back after mm -hmm. not being out of work for a couple months. That's what happened right after COVID. A lot of the big talent, not available because they were trying you know, to catch up. It's crazy to still have these conversations, especially when you talk about like, oh, what happened with this? It's like, well, it was canceled because of COVID. I mean, this show didn't happen or this movie didn't happen. I mean, there was quite a few movies that you and I were talking about that were like, yeah, they may have benefited on the side of going to streaming rather than being in movie theaters. I mean, Sonic became quite a popular movie because of that case. But if we were to go back and say, you know, hey, this was going to have a theatrical release. I mean, how would it have worked? I mean, it didn't favor Black Widow because Black Widow, man. I mean, that's the one movie that just did not. I mean, it was good. Don't get me wrong. It was good. But it just did not fare well just with the whole streaming and movie theater scene. Yeah. Yeah. And how many movies are just going to get the axe now coming back there goes hey you know that time has passed this director's moved on these actors have moved on we just can't make it happen now uh checking uh, checking on tiktok and, and i'm glad you mentioned that because yes actors move on and everybody else uh stranger things was actually supposed to start beginning filming this month mm -hmm. and now with that not happening they're saying the delay i mean because next year we were supposed to get it now they're saying 2025 we're gonna get the the uh, 2020 yeah 2025 we should get the final season i mean those actors are getting older so i mean what I think does one that of them got married <laughs> uh did millie bobby brown get married i, I think she did yeah see so uh, like they're gonna be adults <laughs> they really are and i mean in the time i mean now that they're married and you know life changes and do they want to go back i'm sure there's contracts that obligate them to have to go back to finish but are we still going to be checking for Stranger Things in 2025 when it's like we know these <laughs> kids are already adults? How am I going to tell a 30-year-old to go? I mean, unless they really do well with the makeup, it's going to be tough. Well, I mean, they Beverly Hills 90210, they did it. Some of those kids that were supposed to be high schoolers, they were in their 30s, man. <laughs> uh, I, you just got to push the I believe button. I say, hey, just pretend that it's 1986 and go. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Uh, the big winner in all of this, I mean, it's sad to say that there is reality TV is about to be everywhere oh. right now. Oh, yeah. It's so, the bane of my existence. Oh I man. Reality I, TV. I, I tell you, uh, just looking at some of the programming changes that you look, I mean, you're about to see more and more reality shows. Um, you're about to see a lot of reruns. I saw that uh, Yellowstone is getting ready to show on CBS. Yeah. They're about to move Yellowstone to CBS. So uh, I don't know, man. These networks are trying to figure out what to do while the strike is going on. And uh, I mean, it's good to get other eyes on these shows. But eventually, if they don't figure something out. They're going to be in some trouble. Yeah. Uh, or, or they're just going to move to all non-SAG actors. Yeah, there's. There's that one too, and that one's a that one's a that's a harsh reality right there too. If that's that's what ends up happening, so I don't know, man. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I wonder if they're allowed. Like a lot of these A-list actors are allowed to go at this point do their passion projects that aren't funded by big studios, or they're deciding to finally do that documentary that they wanted to do. I wonder if that allows them to do that. I'm not sure. I know SAG put out a huge list of their do's and don'ts. Yeah. Uh, and that list was a little ambiguous. You get, you know, people are like, Oh, what does that mean for this? Uh, you put on your shoes, your left foot before your right foot. Now you can't do that. It, it's a, it is a long list. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's yeah. I think it's mostly anything to do for promotion for, uh, the big film companies. Yeah. Um, certain podcasts are even getting put on, on, on hold too, because they promoting a show, promoting yeah. an upcoming series or promoting a movie. <laughs> that now those actors are saying, Hey, whatever side projects you had going on now that's being put on hold. So. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see a lot of it is up in the air. Uh, the one movie I hope that just sees, sees it through is, is blue beetle. I really hope it does. Cause I, I don't know the rate that they're going. Cause it's, it's weird, man. Like last week, that's all we were seeing on TV. And I don't know if they were preparing for that, 
But now it's like if the movie wasn't even coming out, it just doesn't exist to them. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's ready to go. It's it's in the can. This all they have to do is push it out. But they're not going to get any promotion from the actors. Yeah, but that won't stop them from promoting it. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure it's still coming out middle of August, and uh, that's what's going to happen. All this stuff that's already done, they're going to start running out, <laughs> and all yeah. this other stuff that's unfinished is just going to sit there. Well, I mean, I mean, for me, hopefully I get a chance to catch up on a lot of the stuff uh, that <laughs> I've been missing out on, man, because there's there's way too much, man. Like I tell you, like I haven't had a chance to watch Secret Invasion yet. Um, there's another show on Apple TV Plus that I, I need to check out its second season. It's called The After Party, uh, which looks hilarious. It's now become like a murder. One. Oh, man, it's like a murder mystery meets comedy type. Uh, it's it's hilarious, man. Um trying to think i can't remember his name i can't remember the actor's name but do you remember ted lasso do you remember the guy who plays yeah. the king that yeah. actor yeah he's the main star of that movie it's huh. it's hilarious uh you got tiffany haddish that's on it um i believe they really they brought like a whole new cast of, of characters it's it's funny man it, it's it, it's a good one and i haven't even got a chance to catch up with apple that, tv but. is killing it and there yeah. nobody knows about them I know in silo I, I I'm trying to get that one you've told me about that one and I'm like uh, and yeah. I've told my wife I was like maybe we need to watch that before we watch the after party because I I mean you said it was great man and you didn't steer me wrong when you told me about Ted Lasso and we loved that series the la I think I think I got finished this first season of silo and that reveal at the end of the season oh <laughs> I did not see that one coming. When that reveal, I was just like, oh, oh. this is messed up. <laughs> yeah. Apple TV Plus is definitely where it's at right now. And uh, Netflix has some some pretty good documentaries these days. I don't know why, man. I've been on a documentary kick uh, as of late. Just Or like stuff from the past. Like I watched this thing about old uh, children's toys from back in the 80s and 90s. Like learning about like the power rangers and just seeing the like toys that made us <laughs> the yes oh my gosh like yeah. <laughs> and don't you ever see those shows and think why did i get rid of them when i was a child uh well i grew up poor and i didn't have them i was just <laughs> my friends had them yeah <laughs> so see, why didn't i steal that from my friends back in the it, day <laughs> i was just about to say that i was like cousins and everyone else had them yeah. i would just borrow them yeah <laughs> AKA Put them in my backpack and leave and not tell anybody. <laughs> Sorry, my cousin's watching this. If my cousin checks this out and finds this out later, he's going to call me out on it and be like, hey, I knew you took my damn Power Rangers. Sorry, man. Yeah, they have been doing a lot of documentary stuff. I, I just watched the Wham! documentary the other night, and I was kind of surprised at how much I liked it. Yeah, uh, that. Uh, I just finished the Gladiators, American Gladiators documentary. I haven't seen that one. Oh, man. Talk about a show that it was popular back in the eighties, nineties. Everyone wanted to be an American Gladiator. Yeah, but that, that, that oh, <laughs> but let you me had the Gladiators know. you liked, and you had the Gladiators you hated. But let me tell Turbo. you, I felt bad for. Oh, oh my God, Turbo! Oh my God, Turbo! <laughs> All I can say is, read your contracts, everybody. You are in a business <laughs> where you have a contract. Remember to read your contracts, but. Yeah, no, it's those poor guys, man. <laughs> All of them, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, how's Alan McGordo going? Good. It's doing really well. Uh, we're starting to go. We're going to start pushing a lot more ads uh, because there's still a lot of people who don't know. They, you know, they come down. And, oh, when did you guys open? So we've only been <laughs> advertising it for three years. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> so but it's, it's doing right. well. That's good, man. That's good. And then uh, Crucis, uh, I mean, you guys are business as usual there. Uh, every Wednesday is New Comic Book Wednesday. And uh, yeah, man, you guys are you guys are always busy. Yeah, yeah. And then we have a couple events that we do. So always <laughs> always have something to keep me busy. Oh, man. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, definitely, uh, definitely keep it as busy. That's why I say, Troy, I was like, your busy has now spread into our world now. And I'm like, I think Troy was just trying to make us even more busy. It's infectious. It's a virus. It really is. And now I'm <laughs> passing along the joy to everybody else. Who else wants to be busy? <laughs> and you get work to do. And you get work to do. <laughs> hey, by the way, guess what? Gino, talking to a trade you tomorrow, by the way, buddy. 
Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. oh, who's who's doing uh, honky tonk man? Uh, we flipped a coin and Gina won. Oh, yes, well, I know. I still have Greg the Hammer coming, so you can. I, I, I told him I wanted I wanted Greg the Hammer. I told him I was like, cool, then I'll settle. I was like, not that I'm settling. I was like, but I really wanted to talk to Greg the Hammer too. I was excited <laughs> to talk about him. And then just kind of bringing that connection together between him and Honky Tonk Man, I think was going to be. Yeah, ask ask cool. Greg about breaking Wahoo's leg. He's got a really good story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know what? I mean, any uh, anybody that is a part of the con scene, just the stories. Even if you're just hearing about the different cons that they've been to, to just some of the different things, like the stuff that they get remembered for, I think oftentimes shocks them that they're just like, "How did you even know that?" It's like, dude, Google is my best friend. That's why. Yeah, Wikipedia. It tells you a like, lot. I know everything. I know what kind of cereal you just had this morning. Oh, it wasn't cereal. It was oatmeal. <laughs> With raisins. I exactly. know this. <laughs> yeah. uh, Troy, they want to stay up to you, uh, up to date with you on the socials. Uh, how can they keep up with you? Uh, we're all over interwebs. We got the, the Insta, the Meta, the Twitter, the YouTube, and the Tiki Taki. No threads yet? I'm I'm holding out, man. I want to see where this is going first. Yeah, uh, threads is definitely uh, uh, it's been okay. I've been trying to really get into it, but just like Twitter, it's kind of starting to slow down for me. I don't so. trust Zuckerberg, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna wait. Hey, don't say it too loud, man. If you've seen those videos of Zuckerberg training for UFC, well, oh, oh with him yeah. and Elon going at it, yeah. I don't know. My money's kind of on Zuck. He's training with some some professional UFC fighters too, and he's getting the the hell kicked out of him too. He, yeah, I'd be it, surprised if it actually happens, but my money would be on Zuckerberg. Yeah, Elon's I mean, all talk. <laughs> he really is. He was like, he's a good trash talker, but then again, both of them are kind of bad at the trash talking. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just like nobody told them that. Hey, while you're a billionaire, you should probably learn how to trash talk. <sighs> You don't need to if you're a billionaire. Why even bother fighting? You're a billionaire. I know, right? But he's like, I have a billionaire. I hired all of UFC. I hired the entire company to train me. <laughs> uh, me, you can catch me on Facebook, Hot 103's Big Show. You can also catch me on the Insta, uh, Joey on the FM, Big Show FM, and then on the Tiki Taki, uh, Joey on the FM. You guys can catch me there as well. Guys, this has been another edition of Zia Comic Weekly. We'll see y'all nerds next week. Later, nerds.